Last one, what I want you to picture is that R and S stay put. In fact, that's why I've labeled them R and S over there. But I want you to picture taking P plus Q and kind of dragging it, dragging Q up the top here, so it changes from being a secant to a T for tangent. Okay? Now, there's a very similar relationship across here. I'm trying to draw this parallel for you. How are we going to prove the relationship? Well, let's construct the similar triangles. Where are they? Uh, I'm going to join up the same pair of chords I had before, right? So I'm going to join up this one over here, and then this one over here. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Now, if you have a look at this, because it's so similar to this diagram, it's just the secant has turned into a tangent, just like we did in calculus. Um, you can pretty much proceed in much the same way. See this guy over here? is still going to be common between the two triangles that you're trying to prove to be similar. Okay? But what's interesting is you no longer have a cyclic quadrilateral, do you? So you can't take advantage, you can't use this property that the exterior angle of a cyclic quad, blah, 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 because you don't have a cyclic quad. Instead, if you look at where those angles are, look at where the angles are, we're contending that this guy should be equal to this one down here at the bottom. It's not a cyclic quad, so what are you going to say? The angle in the alternate segment, which we just looked at this morning, is this guy. Because look, tangent, chord of contact, right? And then over here you've got the big, the big alternate segment over here. Okay, so for a different reason, it's still the same. Okay. One last time, now that you've established that they are similar, and you can go ahead and you can formally prove it, um, what are the sides that relate to what? Well, let's have a look here. Wait, sorry, say it again. Ah, have a look. Which are the two triangles I'm thinking of? You know how over here I had a small one and a big one? Which overlap, right? Well, I have another small one and another big one that also overlap. Do you see them? This guy up here in the corner, and then the whole triangle. I'm actually not interested in this triangle. This triangle in here is no good to me. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> my diagrams aren't perfect. Okay, so to help you out here, right? I'm actually rather than the other ones because this is the most confusing. I am actually going to label some points. So let's call this A, B, C, and D. Okay. One of the things that's nice about that is that now if, for example, I drew out the similar triangles separately, for example, let's have a look at A, B, D. It looks like this. A, B, D. There's A, B, D. And I'm contending that it's similar to the big one, A, B, C. Do you see that? So I'm going to draw that out separately. When triangles overlap, it's tricky, right? Um, so I'm going to draw out the big one. It looks like this. This is the way it's facing. A, B, C, angles down there, angles up there. Okay. So if I were to state the similarity relationship here, right? Say for example, A triangle ABD is similar to what's the corresponding order for the other ones? What uh, what angle corresponds to A here? It's still A again, isn't it? And then here, just be careful. ABD here goes dot double and then the unlabeled angle. So therefore here I've got to go dot, double, and then the unlabeled angle. So it's A, C, B. Does that make sense? And again, the reason why we do this is because even though it's a bit of work to think about it, it saves you work later when you're doing this part. You don't really even have to think about it because watch this. Just look at the order of the letters and then match up the order of letters. So for example, A, B in the small triangle, forget about the diagrams for a second. If this lettering order is right, then what side does AB in this triangle correspond to? AC, do you see it's the first two, first two? See that? So AB on AC is going to be equal to, what's the other intercept that we've got over here? See this small one, AD? AD. Have a look again at these guys. Just don't forget about the diagram. You've thought about the diagram. Now you've got these in order. AD corresponds to? Ah, that's interesting. We've already got this side, but it belongs in both triangles because of the way that they overlap. Okay. So there's the ratio relationship. So now I can say AB squared equals AC times AD. 
And now if I replace that with the original letters that I began, began with, AB squared is T squared. What's the product over here? If you put it in alphabetical order, that looks familiar, doesn't it? Because it's the same thing. It's the same secant. Uh, I haven't moved it anywhere, and so it's the same intercept on that secant. Okay. Now, you're not going to like this, but I promise I've made it as good as I can. Grab your sheet out with all your properties on it. <coughs> this one is the big one. This is the biggest and hardest, but I hope if I write it out for you in the right way, and you can fill it in on here as well, it actually will be doable for you. Okay? Let's fill it in on here. Let's fill it in on here, and then I'm going to point you to the fact that I actually encourage you to write it a slightly different way that I think will help your memory. Because unlike the, for the reference sheet, um, no circle properties on the reference sheet. Okay? So, here's what we're going to fill in. Um, the first thing, it's a, there are three blanks, and it corresponds to this guy. The first three blanks correspond to this guy, right? It's something that's squared. Do you notice that? Something that's squared? So the first word in 14 is the square. What's it the square of? Okay, now it... The way I've drawn it, it is the square of the tangent. However, this tangent could very likely just go on forever, right? So t, that interval, is not the whole tangent. It is, in fact, an intercept on the tangent. Does that make sense? So I'm trying to say, look, I just want that portion, okay? So I'm going to say the square of the intercept. The intercept on what? On the tangent, very good. So that's the left-hand side of the equation. That's, in words, what t squared means. Okay. Uh, what's it equal to? Yeah, you're starting to get it, right? And this is, has, this, you see why these all have to be learned together, right? Over on the right-hand side, because you've dealt with the left-hand side now, you don't have a square over here, you have a product. It's something times something else. So you would say um, the square of the intercept on the tangent equals the product Product of what? Well, there was one intercept for the tangent, but the secant has more than one intercept. It has a few. So you would say the product of intercepts, plural. And we're not talking about the tangent anymore. We're done with the tangent. So now we're talking about the secant. Now, you see why I said to you this is the worst one, but it also has a nice sort of, it's almost sort of this poetic sort of rhythm to it, right? Because look, the first part of it is that there's a square and then there's a product, right? You see that a square is just a particular kind of product, right? Uh, then you've got these, this intercept and those intercepts. So you see they're parallel to each other. And then lastly, the two shapes that you're actually comparing, a tangent and a secant, right? So I, in fact, even though you could probably fit it on one line as I have done on the printed page, whenever I write this property in an actual proof, I write it in two lines like this, so I can go one, two, three, one, two, three, and I know I haven't missed anything, okay? Um, that way you're really only remembering six words, two lots of three, as opposed to however many words that actually is, okay? So, I'm showing them to you all together because they all marry up to similar triangles, okay? Any questions? Happy times? I already um, gave you the exercise that relates to these. You're probably not onto that, which is fine, um, but you've got time to do that. Um, I am also, lastly, as a, remember I said to you, um, as you practice, you should, I encourage you, now that the topic is, <coughs> inverted commas, finished, um, I encourage you, as we move on to the other topics, to just plug away one at a time. I'm also going to give you some HSC questions on circle geometry. And you can just, there's loads, so you can just, you know, make sure regularly. Like, if you do even two or three a week, I think that's enough to just keep you a bit limbered up and you'll learn the properties a lot better that way. Okay, thanks. Oh yeah, sorry. Great question. Um, to finish this sheet out, you only have one more right at the bottom, 16. Draw this for me, will you? If you draw some intersecting circles, right? 
um, not sorry, yeah, intersecting, so they overlap. So when two circles overlap, this is the last property there. When two circles overlap, there's a single chord that both circles share. Can you see the chord? See the chord? It's between the two points of intersection. So here and here. So because they share this chord, we call it a common chord. Okay? So when two circles overlap, their common chord, have a look, what's the way the sentence finishes? It's something to the interval between their centers. Well, let's draw that interval. Here's one. Oh, you get the idea. Here's the other. What does it look like the relationship is? They look perpendicular, right? This is actually very easy to prove, um, but that's the property. So it's the last one. Again, it has to do with centers. Uh, it comes up very rarely, but it's kind of cool just to see it uh, and know that it's true. Okay. The full words would be when two circles overlap, their common chord is perpendicular. Okay. Do you want me to prove it for you, eh? It's, it's really easy. Watch this. See that? What else do I need? Okay. I've got um, this one here. Uh, isn't that enough? If you know from a center to a chord, uh, it bisects. You, know, you, you, you don't know that it bisects uh, yet. What you do know is that you've got this. So tell me what kind of shape that is, the quadrilateral. It's not quite a rhombus. I mean, my, my big, I've got a bigger circle and a little circle. It's a kite, right? Well, all kites, this is a very unusual, unused property because we don't use kites very much. All kites have diagonals that are, they bisect, oh, sorry, no, they don't. Well, one of them bisects, right? Um, but they're always perpendicular, always perpendicular. And now you know it's perpendicular. Now you know that this guy is equal to this guy. And now you just have a buttload of congruent triangles. So there you go.